bless you. Bless you, pray everybody as well today. Amen. Beautiful day outside. Amen. Pray everybody had a great day. Waiting for a few to come on. Amen. Just been really enjoying our time together. Amen. As we've been FaceTiming and Facebook Live. It's just been really rich. God bless you, Sister Robin. Bless you. God bless you, Sister. Amen. Akira, praise God. Thank you for being with us today. Bless you, Sister Yafat. Amen. Bless you. Pray everybody's doing well. God bless you, Sister Margaret. Sister Erica, God bless you. Amen. Good to, good to just see you. Uh, amen. God bless you, Sister Tammy Smith. Amen. Just good to see your names. Amen. It's kind of really different when I haven't seen you. I look forward to amen. God bless you, Sister T. Praise God. T. Skinner. Amen. I just look forward, amen, to the day that, amen, we'll be able to walk back in. God bless you, Sister Flag. Amen. God bless you, Mother Crouch. Amen. Listen, share out. Amen. Bless you, Sister Terrier. Praise God. I hadn't even heard your voice. Amen. Praise God. Pray everybody as well. God bless you, Sister Mays. Let's share now. Let's, let's begin to share with each other. Amen. Share with your neighbors and your friends as we prepare to, in our 14th day, amen, 14th day of our Daniel fast, a great day that the Lord has made, amen, bless you, praise God. I am so grateful, praise God, that God has been good to us. God has really been good to us, amen, in this Daniel fast, amen, I'm really, really feeling good about it, praise God. God bless you, Sister Janice, pray you stand safe in Florida, amen. Um, in this Daniel fast, praise God, it, you know, I have no hunger at all for any type of meat. It's been great, praise God, it, you know, has just taken me to another level, amen. I'm just very um, encouraged by it, praise God. I know it's a different atmosphere. Usually I'm ripping and running, doing things outside of my home, amen. But being near the home as much as I have been, I've still been able to, because I'm determined, praise God, anything I do, I'll do it 100%. God bless you, uh, Deaconess Clark. Amen. We're still living on those promises, 21 days of promises. Amen. Amen. I want us to, amen, have this series. We've been in this series, and I want us to leap this day in our spirit that there's promises lined up with our name on them, and we have to operate and trust those promises to be ours. Those are our promises that the enemy and no one else can take from us. I need you all, praise God, to be so, amen, determined to have that in your spirit that you walk in the promises, amen, with faith, amen, that the enemy can't steal them from you. Praise God. Today, praise God, we're talking about, amen, we talked about unconditional love, never being alone. I mean, some real serious things because, you know, at this time, it's amazing that these promises are all are good for us in this time of need, knowing that God has made these promises for us. And throughout the Bible, I was looking at it, praise God, and I think, Amen. And I didn't want to quote it, praise God, because I think it was like 700 and some odd promises. Uh, and, you know, then I seen another with another quote. And so I'm still looking for myself to feel comfortable what to say as far as the total number when we get to the 21 days. But I, the reason I said that, because I encourage each one of you to maybe search to see how many promises you can find. Amen. And find the ones that mean something to you. Amen. And then live on those promises. So praise God, 14th day, amen, great day in the Lord. Promises, amen, that we're in a series. We're living 100%. I decree, praise God, can't nobody steal that from me. I am determined that God has blessed me to live 100% in the devil and no one else can steal that from me. Praise God. In our scripture, praise God, it says, amen, in our, in our topic, amen, our nugget of the night was, you are redeemed and have eternal home in heaven. Amen. We hear about this all the time. And I heard the old saying, praise God, everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go today. That is true, praise God. None of us are ready to go, but when we, when it's our season and time to go, God bless you, Pastor Jones, amen. God bless you. Good to see you come on board, amen. I'm excited for you, amen. Our new Fifth Street Baptist Church pastor, we love you, amen. So we all say we want to go to heaven, but we don't want to go right now. And that's normal, praise God. God has even made our bodies to sustain itself and survive. But there will come a day, praise God, that we all will, amen, have that day of a reckoning, amen. And that day we want to know for a fact that we're headed, praise God, where God has promised us we can be. 
Amen. So first of all, we need to understand that we are redeemed. Um, you know, and 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 here's a here's a very basic scripture, John 3 and 16, that um said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him shall, uh, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's just as plain as all our doors, amen. If we, man, if we just believe that God has gave his son, that's the first bit of faith already that God, that Jesus is the son of God, that he died for us and he rose, amen. And because he rose, we realize, praise God, that we're away from all the sins of this world. Somebody say amen to me. That's our first leap of faith. But you know what happens, praise God, when we say that something happens in the inside of us, we know that the spirit of Christ comes in us, but that leap of faith gives us something that we never, ever expected. But I went a little further in Galatians 3 and 13, and Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. And it said, for it is written, curse is in every, anyone who hangs on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the, the promising blessed to Abraham will come to the Gentiles in Christ so that the faith we may receive the promise of the spirit. Remember, I love the word promises. I've been loving the word promises, praise God, all this series. We've been in this series, amen, ever since, praise God, the month of February, amen, and we're wrapping it down, praise God, we're in our 14th day of it, praise God, and 14 more, I mean, not that many more, 21, praise God, nine more days of it, praise God, and then we'll be closing out of the promises, but we got something else God has given us to do, so hold still, amen, because we got the 30 days to be a better you, that amen is floating around, but I haven't launched it out there, praise God, because we're going to stay on these 21 days, and we'll just stay focused there, but then we're going to introduce you to the 30, um, uh, um, 30 days, uh, uh, the 30 days to be a better you, praise God. So, amen. That tells us right that Christ redeemed us, amen, from the curse of the law. Now, the reason I wanted to bring that up, because this is where, amen, the enemy, the devil tries to get us, try to keep us under the law, try to make us feel, praise God, because the things we've done and the way we live before, that we still are accountable for them. He wants us to think, praise God, that we can't be redeemed or released from those things. How does he do this, praise God? Because, amen, the minute that something goes wrong, the first thing we begin to think, well, we don't deserve, praise God, God's blessings and his favor upon our lives. See, this is a lie from the devil. But once God redeemed you and you repented, praise God, and asked God and Christ into your life, all the things you've done prior to that is behind you. Somebody say amen to me. Praise God. I don't care what your credit reports show. I don't care what the record shows downtown at police department. I don't care what the FBI report shows. I don't care what nobody else said, but in heaven, amen, in salvation, you are saved. Somebody say amen to me. But the devil makes us want to think that, amen, this is the lie. He uses this. Why does he use it? Because it instantly, instantly, once the devil and the angels he was with, with was determined, amen, to disobey God in heaven. They was determined to do this, praise God. And in that time, praise God, they was automatically knew what their life would be from that day on. And with him knowing that, he has no desire for anybody else to be favored. You ever heard Misery Love Company? Somebody talk to me. <laughs> That's what the devil is. He loves to have everybody else go to hell with him because, amen, he doesn't like it. He knows what it's all about. Let me explain something to you. The devil knew how beautiful heaven was. The devil knows how beautiful it is. The devil knows everything about it. And when he lost out, amen, and got kicked out because he thought he could overtake it, oh my God. Don't you know, praise God, he's all upset, amen, and anybody he can attack and try to stop from going, that's what he's trying to do. So when we are redeemed, we're redeemed and the devil can't stop us. But we got to believe it within ourselves, saints of God. We got to walk around with that promise, amen. I don't care what you've done and how, amen, you've done it. God has blessed us, praise God. Is that all right? Somebody say amen to me. Amen. And the Romans 8 and 3 said, for what the law could not do, God sent his son to do. That means, praise God, that we can't live under the law. The law never has been able to save anybody. The law, amen, just requires you, praise God, to follow. Amen. We know, praise God, we can't follow the laws here in the state of Virginia. How, what are you thinking? Praise God, we speed 55 and 65. Come on, talk to me, saints of God. So the law, amen, is just a thing. But the blood of Jesus, amen, covers us, amen, over a multitude of sins. That blood of Jesus, amen, took care of all of those things. 
Law could not do. Law could not redeem our relationship. Remember, Jesus come to open that door. Don't forget on the other side of the cross. Amen. In these 21 days, some of you need to realize that if you're saved, you're on the, a whole new a whole new level, praise God. You're just not, amen, on straddling of a fence. Amen. Remember, praise God. And I've taught this, amen, many a days in living word. And I'm going to still share it, praise God. Amen. We've got the cross. Amen. You're standing at the cross when you get saved. But behind you is that fence. That fence, praise God, that is the sin. Amen. Is that all right? Now, you got a choice there, praise God. You at the cross or at the fence. If you fall back, praise God, you'll fall into corruption. If you fall forward, you'll fall into the cross. But Jesus said that, amen, I've opened a door. That even, amen, listen to this. If you go into the door, listen to me. The cross will be behind you. So if you fall, you'll fall into Jesus. <laughs> See, and you'll be going to the Father. Y'all ain't catch that. I'm the only one caught that. See, you get further, praise God, away from the fence. You get further away from the sin. If you stay there at the cross, oh, y'all ain't I'm, I'm, I'm going to shut up before I shout a little bit or turn the phone upside down. You know I do a living word. Praise God. Put the mic down. Walk out. Because I know that's solid word. We, Amen. We get away from the fence. Praise God. So, amen. The devil wants us to believe that it's okay, praise God, to stay in a place and suffer forever. He wants to make us think it's okay to believe that we're that everything we've done is that is it. That we're not going to ever have anything that's a blessing. That we're always going to have a defeated life. The devil is a deceiver. He doesn't want us to feel that we're redeemed. He doesn't want us to feel that we have the promises in our lives. He's always attempting to try to get us. But here's our life. And I use this, praise God. I was studying today, praise God, and this came to me. I went to 2 Corinthians, amen, in the fourth chapter. And I remember when Paul was talking to the Corinth people, amen, and he was telling them, praise God, amen, because false teachers had started cropping up. People started teaching everything but the true living Christ. And he began to, praise God, to tell them, amen. So in the fourth chapter, in the second verse, he said, we reject all the shameful deeds and the underhanded methods. We do not take, we try tricks or any of the discord the, of the word of God. It said, we tell the truth before God and all we are as honest we know. What he's telling, he said, listen, I don't care what they're trying to tell you. We are not going to tolerate it. We're not putting that with it. See, the devil wants you to think that all this is still part of your life. All is a part of what you need to do. But you need to stand up and tell him, I'm not into it anymore. Amen. That's part of redeem. I am redeemed. Nobody can ever change that. Praise God, no matter what. Amen. John 4. And so I want to make sure you understand you're redeemed once you repent, once you give your life to Christ. Now, let's talk about a little bit of miss messing up. Can we talk a little bit about messing up? Can I come on? Give me some amen. Say, talk about it, brother. Talk about it. Praise God. Show me. Amen. You at least want to hear about it. Amen. We do. Amen. Are fallible. None of us, amen, are 100% um, perfect. If you was, you wouldn't be here. Amen. Somebody, please help me out. Now, that's a thing that's called willful sinning. That's when you just do it and you know you're not right. <laughs> you have got to repent of those things. Now, you need to, amen, be delivered. Some of his strongholds, we need to ask God at that moment, praise God, because when we get saved, some of us still have a stronghold. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Somebody's still dealing and struggling. Uh, amen. I've had people, praise God, come to me and say, Pastor, amen, I've given my life to Christ. I'm walking right, but I can't get rid of these cigarettes. And I told him, praise God, every time you pull a cigarette out, you pray and say, in the name of Jesus, deliver me. Deliver me, praise God, amen, from him. I need to be delivered. Take the taste from my mouth. Amen. Every time you put one to your mouth, say, God, I am a vessel of yours. Amen. You get delivered of those strongholds. You seek to be delivered of those strongholds and God can deliver you. Amen. Amen. That's part of what you do. That's called warfare. Sometimes you got to fast and pray. Some of the things come out only by fasting and praying, but you got to be determined to be released from those things. And the devil wants you to think, praise God, because you have warfare that you are not in God. You got to say the the devil is a lie. Now, willfully, amen, knowing and not trying and desiring to come out of where you are, it's another conversation. 
Amen. That's when we said, oh, well, I'm going to do it. I know it's not the will of God. God knows my heart. We got to be careful with that. Yeah, God does know your heart. And God wants your heart to be is the heart of God. He wants you to have the heart, amen, that's just like him. So you got to be very careful with that. You want to be desired to be living for God in every way you know how. So, amen, this is part of that. And the devil wants you to think, praise God, you can get those things twisted. But the devil is a lie. Going to church every day don't get you saved. <laughs> Being baptized don't save you either. <laughs> hey, come on, so what? I ain't getting no amens. I'm out here by myself now. Amen. All that is is recognition, praise God. Amen. When you are baptized, it's only being recognized that you are saved. Coming to church means that you're fellowshipping with the brother. Because we can't forsake ourselves for fellowshipping and getting strength, unity in the brotherhood. Amen. But what I'm trying to say, praise God, I've seen a lot of people. Let me explain something to you. The devil was in charge of the music in heaven. He in hell. <laughs> Oh, that was a good one all by myself. Somebody, look, somebody say amen to me. Amen. You got to be careful, praise God, not to allow. Come on, somebody help me out. You got to be careful, praise God, to know, amen, that we got to be watchful for our souls. And don't let the devil trick us in any way. Can I get an amen? So the devil, amen, is constantly trying to make us feel that we're not redeemed, trying to make us feel that we're out of the box, that God doesn't care, that we couldn't be saved for the stuff we've done. But it's a lie, praise God. Once you redeem, you are redeemed. And by being redeemed, praise God, and you know it, I want you to know it. That's why I'm spending a little more time on it. I need you to know that you know that you know that you know that you know that you're redeemed, praise God, and that your life, no matter what you've done, no matter what you're dealing with, you are headed to heaven with God. Now, let us talk about heaven a little bit. John 14, 1 through 3 said, Do not let your heart be troubled. You to believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. And if it was not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, I prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Bing. That is trying to say, praise God, that I am going back to my father's house. I am saying that, praise God, once you give your life to me, once you realize that, praise God, I am who I am, Jesus is who I am. He's saying, amen, that I'm going to the father's house and you are going to be able to be there with me. That's automatically telling you, praise God, that's a promise. That's a promise right there that, amen, if you live for God, you're headed to heaven. I need somebody to say amen to me right there. He said, and not only my father's house, amen, but not only that, he says, praise God, there are many mansions, many rooms, many. Come on, someone. I don't care where you live at today. It's where you're going to live at in your future. <laughs> praise his name. Praise God. Luke um, 23 and 43, and when Jesus was on the cross, listen to this. This is powerful. When Jesus was on the cross, and it, 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 it was two two others on there. And one praise God was saying, aren't you, why aren't you, if you all this, why don't you come down? But the other only said, remember me when you get to your kingdom. That's all he said. When you get to your kingdom today, remember me. Amen. The other one's trying to get down, trying to figure out, oh yeah, if you all this and what you say you are, praise God, let's get down. But the other one says, praise God, remember me. Amen. And what Jesus says to him, truly, I truly tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So hold it. Now, not only now he tell me it's got mansions, now he tell me it's paradise. Now you get me real interested. You get me interested, praise God, that, oh man, the heaven is not only, praise God, a place of many mansions, but also is a paradise. Oh my God. It's starting to make me excited to let me know that heaven is a great place that we all can go. Now, in Revelations, praise God, in 21, you can find out a lot about heaven. Heaven is written throughout the Bible. You'll find more and more. You know, I found a lot of scriptures, and I've been studying, you know, and a lot of scriptures over my years in the Word, and in a lot of it. But praise God, I wanted you to use Revelations 21, and you'll find a lot that you need to understand about heaven. It helps you a lot. But Revelations 21 and 1 says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the first heaven and earth had passed away in the sea. And I saw the holy city of the new Jerusalem come down out of the heavens from God and prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Listen to this. 
Now the fourth verse, and he said, and he will wipe away all the tears from thy eyes. So there will be no more crying, praise God. There will be no more sorrow, saints of God. And then it goes on and saying, there will be no more death. Amen. This thing called death is gone. No more mourning, no more crying, no more pain. And listen to this, the formal things are passed away. I love that all by itself. Let me tell you, how about this? There won't be no rich people. There won't be no poor people. There won't be no this color or that color. Everybody in heaven going to be what God called them, praising him and having a good time in paradise. Somebody say amen to me. Please say amen. Please say amen to me. But, you know, when we we have a blessed, we all be blessed when we go to heaven. That is true. And I know that, praise God, we're all going to have that great day at that time. But I won't to have something now. Come on, someone. I, I, I want God to bless me now. I, I'm, I won't because I'm his child, because I stand as a child of his. I want some favor right now. Come on, someone. I, I don't want to wait until I get to heaven. I, now, I, if God sees that my way, but but I'm really looking for some favor right now. Come on, someone. Somebody better give me an amen out there. I know I'm talking down your alley. I, I, I don't want to struggle and suffer. The devil wants me to think there got to be a suffering way. This got to be a suffering way to get to heaven. I got to suffer and, and fast and pray and moan and be without. But the devil is a lie. Come on, help me out. He wants you to think, praise God, that saints can't have fun and saints can't have this. But the devil is a lie. God can bless us to have just as much as the world can have. Somebody help me out. Somebody bless me right now, praise God. The devil wants you to think. But I read Job 8 and 7. Though your beginnings was modest, your latter days will be flourished. Mm, I like that. Though your beginnings may have been small, may you have small beginnings, maybe right now, praise God, and in your past, praise God, the devil made you think that you'll never get any further. I know some of you, praise God, has been through a lot of trouble, having never had a lot of things, amen, amen, and you don't think you're going to get it all, but God said, I can give you more in your ladder than you ever thought. Amen. You can flourish, praise God. Amen. You can have things that the devil thought you could never have. You just got to have faith to know that God can bring it to you. Come on, someone. I'm living in God's promises. I'm living in God's promises now. I know I'm going to live in heaven. I know that I'm going to have a great mansion there. I know it's going to be streets paved with gold. I know it's going to be pearly gates. I know no more crying and no more suffering. I know that all these great things. I know I'm redeemed and live a saved life. But not only that, I know I can live a prosperous life right now. Come on, someone. I don't need somebody to prophesy to me and tell me that, oh, if you give me $50, you're going to get a million dollars. No, no, no. It says in the Bible that my ladder shall be greater. And I am determined, praise God, that I'm going to start living in the promises of God. From this day forward, come on, someone. In this 21 days of promises, we're going to start living this thing now. We're not going to wait till we get there. We're not going to struggle through this. We're not going to drag through this. We're going to lift our heads up and be somebody. Help me, someone. I'm going to live 100%, praise God. I, I came up, you know, I was just in this thing all day, praise God. I'm going to live a, a right now blessed life. Right now, blessed life. Somebody said I'm living my best life right now. But I live a right now. I'm living a right now blessed life. Come on, someone. A right now blessed life. I am going to live blessed. God's going to be with me. And this is what God gave me and want to encourage you. Here's where I begin to look at this. Psalms 121. I lift up. I look up to the hills which does cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He made my he let me not, he, he will not let you stumble, and the one who watches over you will not slumber. Come on. Indeed, he will watch over Israel, never slumber or sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as you uh, protect your shield. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. For the Lord keepeth you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come go, come and go 
both now and forever. I was stumbling because I'm used to hearing that in the King James Version. He, am I going out? Am I coming in? I know that scripture, praise God. Uh, I know Psalms 121, amen, completely. And when I'm trying to read it in a whole nother uh, language, a whole nother, uh, um, nother um, um, NIV version, amen, it gets me kind of tongue twisted. But I'm trying to get it to everyone they can understand it, amen. But I'm a King James Version kind of guy. He's saying right there, praise God, that God's going to bless me now. He's saying he's going to bless my going out. He's going to bless my coming in. He's going to protect me while I'm out there. He's going to protect me while I'm in. The moon, you're not going to, um, the sun is not going to smite me by day nor the moon by night. I'm not going to be harmed by these things. I'm going to be favored now. I am trying to tell you, saints of God, some of you got to leak this thing in your spirit. Yeah, I'm redeemed. Yeah, I'm going to have a beautiful heavenly life. But while I'm here on earth, between the dash, from the day I was born and from the day I died, I'm looking for a redeemed life now, a blessed life. Come on, someone. Is anybody else with me? Haggai 2 and 9 says, it says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declare the Lord of hosts. That's eight. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, said the Lord of hosts. I'm trying to tell you, some of you need to write that down. You need to write that down. The latter glory of this house. Write it down, write it down, write it down, will be greater than the former. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if you got nothing but one chair. I don't care if you got no chairs in your house. Look around, take a picture. <laughs> take a draw. If you ain't got a camera, draw a picture of what it looks like. And you decree that thing right now that the ladder shall be greater. Put it on your refrigerator. Right across the tables of your heart that God is going to bless you now. Not when you get to heaven, but God wants his people blessed now. Somebody say amen to me. We got to understand, praise God, that God not only redeemed us and the devil can't take it from us. Not only that, praise God, that we got a place, praise God, that's the beautiful place you could ever be. Heaven is going to be so great. Amen. We're going to see everyone that's going on before us. Amen. We're going to be able to see each other. Praise God. Amen. All we got to do is stay live saved and be faithful to God. Continue to grow in him. But as we grow in him, God will begin to prosper us because he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Saints of God, don't be looking for the world. Just look for some God and God will give you everything you need. I mean, come on. I, I'm, I'm telling you. I, I don't want to tell my testimony, but that's the way God works it. When you seek him, he takes care of you, saints of God. He's looking for those that say, I just look for me, praise God. I never forget, praise God. He asked Solomon. He said, Solomon, in a dream, said, what do you want? He said, amen, what do you want? At this time, you can ask me anything you want. Just ask it. I don't care what it is. You got it. Just ask of me. Praise God. I'm a, I know all of us wish we had those wishes. But when Solomon was asked that wish from God, Solomon didn't even hesitate. He said, well, you blessed me with your kingdom. I am now, praise God, a ruling over your people, God. Um, you blessed me with all that I have. He could have asked for his enemies' heads. He could have asked for a long life. He could ask for the most wealth and riches of the world. But he began to understand that, look, you've given me everything that I could actually think I need. He said, but what I want from you, God, is the ability to honor you when I deal with your people. See, because he sought God first. And that leaped in God's spirit because he divinely wanted to bless God. And when you want to shine everything God gives you towards him, God's got a way of blessing you that you can. So when he did that, praise God, what did God do? God rained down on him not only that favor, but because he came the richest man, the most wisest man that ever lived, praise God. Everybody knew of him, praise God. There was no harm to his kingdom. He prospered, praise God, in all the times that he was king. Now, he did backslide, but he came back. Look at it, man. When you're reading uh, Proverbs, you're reading from that wise man who fell and got back up. Amen. But I'm trying to tell you, this is what God wants us to do. He wants to bless us. And listen, I am going to pray tonight, praise God, amen. Not only, amen, as we're closing, praise God. I'm not going to just pray, amen, for us, amen, for the protection of what we're doing. I'm looking for the 100% of prosperity. I'm looking for prosperity over lives, amen. I want us to live a right now 100% life. I want to hear, I want to feel, I want to hear a read. I want to live a right now blessed life. Somebody say amen to me. I want us to pray, praise God, that my life will shift into favor. I don't care what they said about the economy. 
I'm looking for right now blessed life. My life will be overflowing with favor. I am looking for these promises to attack my life in a great way, and the enemy can't stop it. It's going to leave in my spirit with promises. Is that all right? Heavenly Father, God, I am so grateful for this opportunity to share once again with your people. I love God, every one of your people, God. I thank you, God, for keeping those, amen, that are here, God, that are listening every day. I encourage, God, everyone that's under the sound of my voice, God, that will hear this program again later, that they will be blessed by hearing it, God. I speak, God, the favor of protection over their lives through this virus, God, and through all this that's going on. I ask, God, that your promises be upon us, God, that you will continue to cover, God, in the name of Jesus. We ask that you go by the hospitals, God, and those that are in there, Lord, that may be dealing with this virus, that have attacked their bodies, help them to know you, God. Oh, I ask that you send, God, the angels of protection on healing power, God, but most of all, salvation, God, even, God, down to every one of them. I ask that you save souls as ever before, God, through this. In the name of Jesus. We need you to touch every nurse and every doctor, God. Let them see you first of all, God. Protect their lives, God, as they help others. But most of all, God, save souls, God. We want souls saved, people delivered, and relationships with you. Bless in the grocery stores. Bless, God, wherever the stores are open. Move by your power in the name of Jesus. Move into the neighborhoods that we live in. Come on, someone, that you will protect them, God. We speak in the atmosphere your protection over every one of us, God, in the name of Jesus. Let your power and your glory rain down, God, as ever before. In the name of Jesus, now, Lord, we speak God prosperity. We want our latter days to become unfurbished. We don't want to wait until we're 80. We want them now, God. We want your blessings upon each one of our lives in the name of Jesus. We want you to prosper us in the name of Jesus. We want a right now life of blessings, God. We want to show how your glory is. Prosper us through this, God, that others will see that you're great. It doesn't matter what kind of paycheck I got. It's about who I hang out with. It doesn't matter what everybody else say. It does not matter what I see. It's what you say that matters most of all. And I give you all the glory tonight, God. I give you all the honor, God, tonight. I claim everything to be in your perfect will. And nothing, God, no weapon formed against me. The devil or nothing else can stop me, God, in the name of Jesus. Now we speak prosperity and a new light of reign of favor. Now, God, I speak it, God, in the next 24 hours, that 10 people, God, on the sound of my voice, this thing will leave in their spirit and have a testimony of your greatness. Salvation, God, or some type of prosperity leap in our lives. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Thank God, amen and amen. I love each one, and God knows I do. I am starting to pray, amen, even more every day. I am asking God to give us more richer word for you, amen amen, to encourage you, amen, as we go through these programs together, but I need you to share them, amen, ask someone, praise God, amen, Let, lift them up, give them a nugget, praise God, tell them to start living this right now in life, a blessing, don't let them start being suffering, amen, no matter where it is, the devil is a lie, I can live a good life, praise God, I don't have to have a, a Lamborghini, or I don't have to have a Bentley to be living a prosperous and blessed life, all I got to have is peace and favor of God, somebody say amen to me. I love every one of you. God knows to do, and that's absolutely not a thing you can do about it. Be blessed.